Hi, today I'm going to walk you through upgrading a Cisco UCS from 1.3 to 1.4, previously referred to as Balboa. There are a lot of cool features in 1.4 like power capping, software packaging, uh, scalability has now increased up to 20 supported chassis which gives us 160 half width blades so we are now halfway to that 320 that all the Cisco docks say it can scale up to. Uh, we can now directly attach NAS and SAN storage directly to our fabric interconnects via the new appliance ports, albeit with a few caveats. Um, we can now do fiber channel trunking, just as we do with Ethernet, and many, many more great cool features. A lot of people get a little nervous when it comes to upgrading their UCS environments, which I guess is understandable as it's not a task you would do every day. Uh, they may not be that familiar with how to do it, coupled with the fact that their UCS is likely to be running a hundred, you know, hundreds if not thousands of production VMs and applications. Um, so I'm going to walk you through upgrading one of our UCS uh, systems up until uh, 1.41M uh, step by step to hopefully make you a little more comfortable around the process. Um, if the upgrade is followed in the correct order with the correct settings uh, there should be no disruption to the data path. Uh, in fact, I'm doing this upgrade with live VMs running on the ESXi blades. Um, I've got a continuous ping to several of them just to prove that there is no disruption to the data path of the virtual machines. You're going to need a few things before we start. Um, you're going to need to download these three files from uh, Cisco CCO. Um, you need the infrastructure firmware package, which upgrades the fabric interconnects, the IO modules, and the chassis. Uh, the B-Series firmware bundle which upgrades the servers and various endpoints like the adapters, the uh, Cisco Integrated Management Controllers uh, or CIMCs, uh, and the C-Series firmware bundle. Um, as with 1.4 we can now integrate C-Series rack mounts into our UCS instance. Um, you're also going to need an FTP server. Um, other transfer protocols are supported, but with the size of the files etc. I prefer using FTP. Okay, so let's get started. So first things first, like all good engineers, let's back the UCS system up before we start. So we'll fire up our TFT or FTP server. Uh, there's my FTP directory, currently with nothing in it. Uh, I'm going to fire up my UCS manager, go to equipment, click the admin tab. You see we've got a backup button there. So I'm need to going to create a backup operation, so I can just click the plus sign, enable that, um, we'll do a all configuration backup just in case we ever had to restore it, uh, we'll preserve the identities which uh, make sure the WPNs, NICs, Macs and etc are all the same, just type the IP address of my FTP server in here, the name of the file, that I want to back up to. And my username. OK, that should be enough. So say OK to that. I should see my FTP server fire up. And there's the file pops in. Cool. And I'll just double check our FSM or finite state machine. It says 100% and backup success. So we've now got a all config backup of our UCS system. Okay, so let's just double check we've got enough uh, space in our boot flash for our images. Um, so we'll just check fabric inkset A. Um, as a rule of thumb, you're going to need twice as much available space as each firmware package. Um, so that looks fine. Uh, just check fabric B, although it should be the same. Yeah, that's fine. OK. OK, so let's just check the state of our fabric interconnects before we start. So go to the equipment tab of our fabric interconnects. So you can see currently we're running version 1.3. Okay, 
So we're just going to check that our operational state, our interconnects should be all operable. Um, yep, so operable, we'll check the other one. Um, that's fine. Right, now during the course of the upgrade we will be doing a fabric failover. So it's important that we double check that both fabrics are operational and in an HA pair. Uh, so we'll just check the primary, that's ready and state up. Uh, we'll just check the subordinate, um, so it should be ready and state up also. Fine, OK. So as long as our servers are configured for fabric failover, that should again be non-disruptive to our data path. Okay, so next thing to confirm is that our I.O. modules are all in an operational state. Uh, so just go forward and check uh, chassis 1 first. Uh, so you can see I've got four full width servers in chassis 1. So just collapse this a little, make it a little easier to read. So yeah, our chassis 1, our I.O. modules 1 and 2 are both operational and operable state. And I'll just check chassis 2, which is four half width blades in it. Again, let me just collapse these up a little. And we'll see both our IO modules are operable in chassis 2. So we are good to go there. Let's just double check our servers are all operable before we start. So again, just check our four full width blades in chassis 1 are all operable. And our half width blades in chassis 2 um, if a server is not operable obviously you can continue with the upgrade um, obviously it just won't upgrade that server um, so but we're all in good shape there okay okay let's just get the last of our pre-flight checks out of the way uh, which is just to confirm the states of the adapter cards okay so these full width blades have two mezzanine cards in them you can see there interface card 1, interface card 2, uh, both of which are Cisco M81KR Paolo adapters or the VIC virtual interface cards. Uh, what we're do double checking here is that the overall status is all operable in all our cards. Um, so let's check server 5, we're not operable there, and server 7. That's great. Okay, I'll just check chassis 2 um, which has half width blades in them so the half width blades have just the one uh, mezzanine card in them uh, so we'll just check chassis 1 uh, ok so I'll just check server 1 so there's just our one mezzanine adapter which again is a Cisco VIC um, also here we notice that the running version is 1.3 so hopefully we'll be upgrading that in the very near future ok and we are all operable so again we are good to go ok so we're now ready to copy our firmware packages down to our fabric interconnect so we're going to firmware management, installed firmware, which we can see is currently 1.3. You notice also we have a running version, startup version, and backup version. The running version is what's currently running. Uh, the startup version is the version it will run next time uh, the device reboots. And the backup version is a the previous version that we can re, uh, revert back to. Backup versions don't really come into play on a fabric internet because you can store as many uh, images as you have boot flash. Um, Right, so let's copy the first of our packages down to the Fabric Interconnect. I'm just going to copy and paste this file name here, because they are a little cumbersome. Um, I'll put in the root, uh, my username again. OK, so that's ready to download there. OK. So that's now pulling down that infrastructure bundle this will take a few minutes so I'll see if I can speed that up a little bit for you guys watching um, the FSM our finite state machine which is a basically a posh name for our progress bar 
Um, so we can see that it's currently downloading, um, after which it'll unpack it. So let me just pause this for a couple of minutes there to save you guys at home watching this like paint drying. Okay, so that was a couple of minutes of brief pause there. Um, so we're now up to 40%, and by the power of magic pause, we are pretty much done. Okay, so download success. Cool. So now I'll just repeat that process for the B series infrastructure bundle. So again, identical to the previous file we just downloaded. name in again right. okay and that should fire that file off okay and again I'll make this a little less painful for you guys by pausing that progress and we are done And now the last file, which is our C series rack mount firmware package. Okay, so you've seen all this bit before. Okay, we'll just copy our file name in. Okay. should kick the last firmware bundle off. So again I'll just pause with the uninteresting bits of that. So now we have all three firmware packages available to us. Okay. Right, so now we've got our firmware packages down. Let's just have a quick brief look inside them. So we'll do our infrastructure bundle first. So you can see there we have our 6100 fabric interconnects and our I.O. modules and our chassis and our B-series blades. We should have all the, the B-series blades listed down there. Uh, you'll notice also we have the option for the B230 now, which is again is a uh, available in 1.4. And we'll just check our C series rack mount for my bundle. I do have a C series rack mount here which I will be integrating um, in the next week or so. So we're good to go. Okay, just before we start, a uh, note to say that it's important that you follow the order of these firmware updates, otherwise, the firmware updates may fail. You may lose communication with your UCS manager and you may have some unplanned and unnecessary reboots. Um, which obviously we want to avoid. Okay. Okay, so this is the order we're going to want to do things in. Um, so step one uh, is an optional step that if you've got call home configured on your UCS, you're going to want to disable that. Otherwise, you'll get all sorts of messages telling you all sorts of things are happening. Um, next step, we want to do the adapters, then the CRMCs, um, followed by the UCS manager, uh, then the IO modules, then the fabric interconnects and then the host firmware packages which we will deploy via a host firmware update policy and then obviously to remember to turn call home back on again if you're using it right okay so let's get on with the upgrades I'm going to hit the equipment tab and going to firmware management so we'll see our UCS manager is 1.3 but we want to update firmware. I'll have just a quick rundown of our devices and what their current running firmware is. So I'll have a pick server 1 so you can see my interface adapter there. My CIMC is 1.3 as are my IO modules. 
Okay, so I'm going to click on all on the uh, filter. I could obviously update these um, items individually, but I'm going to do them all at the same time. Um, choose 